President Trump and the First Lady have tested positive for the coronavirus. This is a major breaking news that really impacts the continuity of the American government. It's an extraordinary development because it puts the president's health at risk. We're only about four weeks and some change away from the election, of course, on November 3rd. The president announced it on Twitter just before 1 a.m. Eastern. They'll begin their quarantine and recovery process immediately. And we're learning that other members of the White House uh, may have, have gotten the infection as well. Hope Hicks, a counselor to the president, one of the most senior White House officials and someone who spends an awful lot of time in close proximity to the president. And the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee. And the chief of staff at the White House, Mark Meadows, telling reporters on Friday that he fully anticipates there to be additional positive results from other members of the staff uh, or other people who came into close contact with either Hicks or the president. He has mild symptoms. Uh, as we, we look at that, the, uh, the doctor will continue to uh, uh, provide uh, expertise. Trump started his week Tuesday in Ohio at a debate on stage with Joe Biden, six feet apart, but they weren't wearing masks and it was inside. We know that Hope Hicks traveled with the president on Wednesday to Minnesota, where the president held a campaign rally that evening. During that trip, uh, Hope Hicks, according to our reporting, started to uh, get symptoms, started to feel sick. Uh, she was she was isolated aboard Air Force One Wednesday night for the flight home to Washington. On Thursday, she tested positive for the coronavirus and went into an immediate isolation, left the White House. The president is on an incredibly fast campaign schedule. He's doing quite a lot. He has held multiple fundraisers this week. His fundraiser in New Jersey uh, and his decision to travel there came after knowing Hope Hicks had a coronavirus symptom. Nobody wore masks. That was clearly a, a risky situation, but he proceeded with it anyways. It wasn't until late Thursday night when the president was back at the White House that he tested uh, positive for the coronavirus. Politically speaking, this comes at a time when the president has been trying to put coronavirus behind him. It's been dragging down his polls since it, you know, shut down the U.S. in March. We have not seen him wearing a mask. We have not seen him enforcing social distancing at some of the gatherings that he's holding. We haven't seen um, him even talking positively about things like, you know, maintaining six feet of social distancing, washing your hands, wearing a mask. Instead, he's been ridiculing people who are uh, focusing on this virus and taking it seriously and deciding to follow those public health guidelines. I don't have to, I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 200 feet away from it. He shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. Legally, if the president were to get sick enough um, it, where he couldn't serve, and this is happening in the middle of an election, it's not clear what that would mean for the actual election. Legal experts that I've been talking to say that electors uh, aren't really bound to vote for an incapacitated or a deceased candidate. The states don't really have regulations, most of them, for how to deal with this. And that could, in the worst case scenario, leave things pretty messy. This is a government right now where so many of the key decisions are made by the president personally. And so him being knocked out, him being in isolation, uh, really slows down the workings of the government. There's also an ongoing Supreme Court uh, confirmation battle. The president has already nominated who he wants and you know sent that over to the Republican controlled Senate to handle. But it's something that the White House wants to be intimately involved in and that uh, the White House and Republicans are trying to get done in a matter of weeks, possibly voting to confirm the president's nominee before the election. President Trump is squarely in the demographic of people who uh, you know, have more difficulty with coronavirus. He's 74, so he's in that older category that ha tends to get hit harder and longer by the virus. He is at risk and in terms of his temperament, uh, this is a president who does not like to be isolated, who does not like to be behind closed doors. The fact that he has to go into quarantine is a challenge for him, especially in the final days of his campaign. Of course, if the president were to uh, either die or, or resign somehow because of his health, uh, the vice president would become the president. That's the way our government works. Obviously, everyone has been wishing the president well. No one wants there to be uh, a transition of power that, that results from uh, death or severe illness but that is also something that could be on the table as well. So uh, the, the scope and the magnitude of this is just hard to describe.